Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak. Once again, we are down here in Baja, Mexico, testing out the new pedal drive canoe system. A little bit different video this morning because I am flying solo, so I reconfigured the canoe so I can just use it by myself. And also, we don't have the outrigger on this morning. So this is a little bit new to me. I have never done... Where the hell am I? Okay, I know where I am. <laughs> so this is a little bit new to me i've never fished in mangroves all i did was go to the local fishing store i asked them where would be a good place to go and what lures i would use i bought those lures i watched some youtube videos and now we're here in the mangrove channels and i guess what i'm going to do is throw those lures at the edge of the mangroves try not to catch too many mangrove trees and see what we can pull up Now, something I want to show you guys before we start casting is I just drifted into a really shallow spot, which means that I can't flip the fins back and forth for the pedal drive to get a lot of forward propulsion. However, the nice thing about the Hobie flipper drives as opposed to a prop drive is if you get into this kind of a situation, you don't necessarily need to be able to take a full stroke to be able to move. So check out my feet right here. You see how I'm just gently going back and forth? So this is still moving me forward because the flippers still have propulsion if they're moving at all and underneath the boat they're just slightly flipping up and down against the bottom of the hull which allows me to move forward through relatively shallow water without having to pull the drive and without having to use my canoe paddle. And that's one of the main reasons that I went with the Hobie style flipper drives as opposed to a prop drive because even though the reverse feature is a little bit smoother in a prop drive than it is in a flipper drive, I feel like the advantage of being able to kick through shallow water just vastly outweighs that weighs that so anyways um something else i want to mention is that conditions are not good this morning ideally if you're in this kind of situation you want to be high tide that way the fish are coming into the mangroves they're going through the roots and they're feeding in there and you can cast your lures nearby and they can come out and bite them at least that's what youtube tells me but unfortunately it's low tide right now because it just happened to work out that the time that we are out in this area doesn't coincide with the tides that i want all right so opening up the bag of toys here let's start out with the most expensive lure that i bought and try not to lose it so this is a little 15 dollar rapala right here i've taken off the triple hooks and i've put on some single hooks just because triple hooks tend to do a lot of damage to the fish and a lot of times i just want to release the fish i don't want to keep them You can see the action of the lure in the water here. It looks pretty enticing. I would bite that if I was a fish. Okay, there's a fish. There's a fish. Okay. Ah, okay, okay. We got a little halibut. Okay. At home, I would never keep a halibut that small, but down here they're not quite as big as they are at home, and also they are extremely abundant. So just in case we don't hook into anything else, I'm going to put this in the live well right now. Put this guy in the bucket. Probably going to end up letting that fish go later, but yesterday afternoon I was out here and I actually hooked into a decent sized palometa and I figured I caught it right away. There's got to be a ton of them out here and then I caught nothing but cabria for the rest of the day. So we're going to hang on to that guy just in case we need to keep him for food. All right, we got another one. 
feels very small. Oh, okay, it's got some fight in it. Oh my God, I caught two fish. Holy shit, look at this guys, there's one fish on each hook. There's one. Just like I say every time, you can see why I fish singles. See how easy it was to get those fish off of there? So I don't know if these estuary fish are going to have any interest in this or not, but I think I'm going to fish a cast master for a little bit. So a cast master is just a really simple little kind of flashy piece of metal that wiggles back and forth. I've taken off the triple and I've put on this helper hook here that has a little bit of a string in the middle. And I find that I get better hook sets with this and the fish tend to attack the back of this a little bit more. And the thing I like about the Castmaster is that I've got a lot of control over it. I can use it as a surface lure. I can run it deep. I can jig it. Basically, you can do just about anything with the Castmaster. And then also, as it's falling, oftentimes the motion of that will cause it to get hit. So just for the heck of it, I think I'm going to troll this Castmaster for a little bit because I'm getting kind of cold and I could use the exercise. So I'll just throw this out behind me here. So just in case you were wondering, the way that I steer this boat is with a tiller bar underneath the front seat. So you can see it pivots in the center right there. And then out here, I've already got my hands naturally resting right there. And all I have to do to turn one way is push this back just a little bit. Or if I want to turn the other way, I just push it forward with my thumb. It's a really effective and really sensitive steering mechanism. Okay, got a fish, got a fish, got a fish. Okay, what do we got, what do we got, what do we got? What do we got, what do we got? Oh, crazy! I was not expecting this, guys. Oh, I was not expecting this. This is, ah, this is a needle fish. <laughs> it's biting my canoe paddle. Okay, let go, bud. Okay, so this is a needle fish. It's got a long pointy mouth. Ow! Mother it bit me. Uh, sorry about the language, guys. And this is the only needlefish I've ever caught that wasn't snagged. It would actually had a good hook set. Ow! Okay, let go. Please let go. Ow, that really hurt. So I'm holding this with a rag because these things are unbelievably slimy, but this is a needlefish, guys. And I was not expecting them to be up in the estuaries. I was also not expecting it to be so bitey. Okay, sorry bud. Let's put you back in the water. All right, guys, so it doesn't seem to be much going on in the low tide estuary here right now. So as long as we're just cruising along here and not doing any trolling, this might be kind of a fun chance to uh, check the uh, speed and efficiency of this boat in solo mode. So right now I've got my speed tracker open and just gently going along here. I don't know if you could see this, but I'm going about 2.2 miles per hour and then if I push this just a little harder so this is this is relaxed right now I'm just chilling I could do this all day long and it looks like we're going about three miles per hour which is pretty normal for any small watercraft and then if I push it a little bit harder here, 
This is what I would call a light exercise pace right here. So this is 3.5 miles per hour. And then if I just push this, this is what I would call kind of a more of an aggressive exercise pace. And it looks like we're going about 4.5 miles per hour. And then let's just try to push this flat out right now. Okay, so that's pretty hard and that is 5.5 miles per hour. And if I could put both of my hands on the bar next to me while I was kicking, I could get that up to six. But I think that's pretty good speed and efficiency for a 34 inch wide, 15 foot long canoe. So lots of advantages to the pedal drive. Let's go ahead and turn the boat around here and head out of the estuary and see if we can get into some other type of fish. All right, so slight complication. As you can see, the bay out here is totally socked in with fog. And I don't really have a problem fishing in these conditions. I've been a sea kayaker for over 30 years, so I'm very comfortable both paddling and navigating in fog. But what I do worry about is getting hit by a boat that's going too fast and not watching where it's going. And so probably not gonna stay out here for too long. I'm gonna do a little bit of fishing. And if it's really good, then I'm gonna keep the cameras on and we'll pull up some weird fish. If not, I'm just gonna go ahead and head in and then I'll start the cameras up tomorrow morning and we'll do this video over the course of a couple days. Oh, oh I got another barracuda. Come on, bud. Okay. Stop. Ah, problem with these things is they they wiggle so much it's hard to get the hook out of them. This guy is not cooperating, so I'm gonna have to grab him. Barracuda is another very slimy fish, which is why I have this towel with me. Alright, guy. Good luck. Sorry about this experience. This pattern on the water here off to my left is, is fascinating. It's kind of freaking me out, but it's kind of cool at the same time. Okay, got another fish. Not a big fish. No? Oh. Well, I don't know. Seems to have a little bit of attitude. Okay, okay. Okay, this is a little Corvina, guys. Okay, so the goal is going to be to get a bigger one of these, but this is definitely the size that will work for fish tacos. So we're gonna do a little fish switch here. I'm gonna remove this halibut. Okay, halibut, it's your lucky day. You're gonna go free. And I'm gonna switch you out for this Corvina right here. This is tiny. I'm probably gonna let this guy go. All right, we got a fish. Okay. Oh, what do I got here? Okay, this is a this is a more decent sized Palometa, guys. Gosh. Oh, it's tempting to keep that for food. I think I'm gonna let him go. There we go. All right, bud. Have a good life. Oh, those things are super slimy. It's 
Oh, okay. Okay, okay. I've, I've got a fish. I've got a significant fish. Do not take me into the mangroves. Do not take me into the mangroves. Okay. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Okay. I'm gonna let this go, but I'm gonna show you guys this fish. This is a beautiful fish. This is uh, some type of grouper. I'm not exactly sure. It's not the same as the leopard grouper I've been catching on the Sea of Cortez side, but that is, that's a nice looking fish right there. All right, cool, see you later. All right guys, so it's about eight o'clock the next morning. I've been out on the water for a couple hours now trying to hook up with something really interesting to close this video out. But unfortunately, I'm just still pulling up one Cabrilla after another. So I think I'm gonna call it for this particular video. We didn't catch any huge fish, but we did catch a really interesting variety of fish today. Got to spend some time in the canoe, got to check out some scenery. So I'm gonna call that a win. And I have decided that I'm actually gonna stay here for a couple more days to wait for a more favorable tide. So I've got a couple days of video editing work to do, and then we're gonna hit it again. Hopefully I can pull up something big and exciting for you. In the meantime, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Also, if you're interested in the skin on frame boats that you saw in this video, make sure you check out our website, capefalconkayaks.com, where we've got a whole bunch more skin on frame building video courses, plan sets and various free skin on frame resources you can also find us on instagram at cape falcon builds where we post photos and videos of whatever we're working on in the shop or whatever we're testing out in the field and you can find that same content on the cape falcon kayak facebook page as well so i think that's it for this video take care be safe on the water i will see you next time